Hello, Bees Bladers. Welcome back and welcome newcomers to the channel. I have a brand new petrified fish to share with you guys and gals today. And I hope you're having a fantastic day. And you ready? Here it is. Ooh, look at that. It's the petrified fish deep sea, the PFP05. Whoa, look at all that carbon fiber goodness. <laughs> have you had your fiber today? Here's a little bit of carbon fiber for you. Wow, check that out. And it is, the camera usually don't like carbon fiber. So I'm going to take a minute and let you get a get a good look at it. Soak it all in. Just have a good look. So it has the bolstered look, two different types of carbon fiber. Up here, it's kind of that checkered look. And then here's like the really satiny, suave. <laughs> I don't know what word I want to use. Here's this side. Wow. And now there's two different versions. This is the one with the blacked out. And this isn't coated. This is, uh, what do you call that stuff? Stonewash. So this is going to look really nice going all the way around before I open the blade and forget about everything else. And really nice backspacer, a little bit of jimp jimps, big old jimp jimps, ka -thunk, ka -thunk, ka -thunk going on. And do we have a lanyard? Oh, <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> we do have a lanyard and come on, give me up. There we go. Yeah. So it has a lanyard. <laughs> Halfway through the video, I realized, oh yeah, it still has the uh, little taggy do in there. There's their, there's their uh, little taggy do symbol. Anyway, anywho. And let's see, we do have a little bit of jimping up here. Um, it doesn't look like it comes enough to the top, but we'll check that out with the ergos and the action. And there's some jimping up here. It's not very grabby. It's kind of a kadunka dunk dunk It's not super grabby. We'll check that out here in just a second. And it looks like a couple screws right here. And those are T6s and a T8 in the pivot. And of course, they petrified fish. They have D-shaped pivots and ceramic ball bearings. You ready to see this blade? Pow! Right in the kisser. Ho, ho. So, if you like bigger blades and bigger knives, this one has a little, little more substantiality to it. Would you look at it? Just look at it. Now, this one, there's two versions. There's this version, and then there's also the one with the carbon fiber scales. But it also, this part right here, the uh, bolster part is silver, and then you have a satin blade. Speaking of blades, let me get this one wiped off. It still has the, the goop from the shipping from the box. There we go. Now it looks stonewashed. For a minute there, it looked like it was coated, but it is not. It has the black stonewash going on. And while we're at it, hey, look at that. Would you look at it? Very nice finish. Very even. And woo, look at that grind. I'm telling you what, petrified fish, they don't mess around. They get such a nice clean grind going on. And there's no branding on the blade. Gotta love it. And there's your petrified fish pivot. Nice looking pivot and going all the way down real close down this side and then look at on the, you know what? We'll take this apart and see what it looks like on the inside. We'll do a quick disassembly here in just a minute. Now let's check out um, left and right. Absolutely solid. Nothing, nothing up and down left to right. It's as solid as a fixed blade. And what's our lockup? Lockups around, I'd say around, uh, around 30 to 40%. And are we centered? Yes, we are centered. And I got to tell you, petrified fish, their knives are work knives. They are not. They are not messing around with their knives. And let's see how this pocket clip looks. Um, so it's not deep carry. This is going to be a work knife. So you'll be able to get it in and out of your pocket easy without having to dig to grab it. And especially if you haven't seen the channel, if you haven't seen my my content, I always say if you're going to be getting a, a knife in and out of your pocket a lot, this is advantageous. I'm not big on a deep carry pocket clip if I'm going to be getting in and out of my pocket a lot. So that is very nice and ooh, super sturdy. And how is it in and out of the pocket? One hand, I don't have to do the whole reach over, reach around for my pocket. So that's very nice. That works very well. I think it was on Instagram I read that this was modeled after the ghost shark. I haven't looked up a ghost shark yet to see the resemblance, but I'm, it's something about it being dark and mysterious or, or the special colors or something like that. I don't know. Let's see what the blade does. Oh, oh, yeah. Can you hear that? Would you hear it? Just hear it. <laughs> oh my goodness. This thing is sharp like a laser. Wow. That is, in, that, that is just plain out enjoyable. I know that's why you don't buy a knife, but come on. <laughs> I mean, man, oh man. I'll do some quick size comparisons for you and then we'll check out the action and the ergos. Here's the QSP Penguin. And how about, haven't had this one out in a little bit, the Spyderco Paramilitary 2. Yeah, look at that. It's longer than the Parrot 2. 
And here is, you know what that is? The CJRB Feldspa. It's the Feldspa and the Kubi KU322. So if you had any doubts of how big or small this knife was, if you have a Feldspa or a Penguin, you definitely know this is not a baby. It's not a baby knife. Here's the Savivi Praxis, which that's a big boy too. And the Ontario Rat number one. Check that out. Yeah, uh, all you guys and gals that like the bigger knives, you have the bigger hands, you like the bigger knives, this is going to be definitely one up your alley. And here is the PF, which one is this? The PF 949. Wow, it's even bigger than the 949. Jeez. And last but not least, the Petrified Fish PF 838. So there's three Petrified Fish for you. There's the three fishes, but you know what? All three of these, they're all work knives. They're not going to mess around. I like how Petrified Fish does the whole looks thing on top of good ergos. Let's check out the ergos. First, let me show you the deployment. And don't forget, deploy... That is so... <laughs> it's so dorky. Don't forget to deploy the subscribe button. <laughs> but, hey, while you're at it, hit the big thumbs up if you support the channel and you like knife content. So, you ready? Here's the push button. Pow! Man, that comes out with a Thor tie. And, okay. Uh, ooh. <laughs> oh. So, it's pretty smooth, but you know what? I bet after we take it apart and lube it a little bit, it's going to be even smoother. So, watch the watch how it acts now, and you'll see after we take it apart and give it a little clean and a lube job. So, a couple little shakes. You could give it one good shake. Eh, it's a couple shaker for sure. Now, I'm not really feeling the jimps. It does have the jimping up there, but it's not really grabbing my finger, so it doesn't feel like it has jimping at all. But man, it, whoo, boy, it is easy to grab. It's easy to grab a hold of. Um, if, I, if I put my finger up top here like this, my finger does grab the jimping. So it, it wouldn't be fair for me to say that you don't grab the jimping at all. When you commit your finger up higher, you do grab onto the jimps and it comes flying out. And there's your uh, sharpening choil. There's your plunge grind. There's your sharpening choil. And the pass-through works really well. There's no jimping on there, but I'm not having to dig my finger pretty darn comfortable. Not the most comfortable in the world, but it's definitely easy to use, not difficult at all. How about left-handed? Left-handed feels good. The size of my hand is four inches from here to here, three and a half from here to here, and from the bottom of my palm to the tip of my little finger, seven and a quarter. Let's see how she looks. So width-wise, my hand is a large width. Length-wise, it is a medium. I have short fingers, so I have plenty, plenty of room you have plenty of room for, for, for an extra finger if you're a six-fingered guy or fellow. <laughs> ah, and how's the... Oh, yeah, look at that. The, the regular... Uh, what do you call that? Like traditional grip is comfortable. Now, you're jumping up here. is not grabbing my skin at all. My finger just slides right across it. So, I definitely... This would be a nitpick is I would want this to be a little more grabby. My finger... My thumb isn't really locking into that jimping at all, but it, it's not its not painful. It's just not really locking my hand into place. Now, I will say, ergo-wise, I have a good grip. I mean, this it is solid. And hot spots, no hot spots at all. That, that pocket clip's not bothering me whatsoever. So for doing some, some pull, pull cuts, some push cuts, I mean, you're, lo you're locked in right here behind the, uh, behind the flipper. So you're definitely good to go. It's going to be a good cutter. Um, as far as, eh, you'd have to do a little tipping up if you're going to do utility cutting. But wow, look at that blade. Nice swedge right along the top. But this is a nice tall, flat grind. And ooh, yeah, this, this is going to be a good slicer. I tell you what, let's take it apart and see what it looks like on the inside. All right. Now, you know what? While we're at a different light setting, let me give you another look at this carbon fiber. A little bit of carbon fiber action. Because it, it is definitely hard to portray what it looks like. Now, something I didn't mention before, there is no texture. It is slick. But it didn't keep it from locking into my hand. So that's definitely something to keep in consideration. Like if you work at a Vaseline factory or something like that. As Nick Shabazz would say. But unless they threw me a curveball, Petrified Fish, they're one of the were they one of the brands, one of the knives that I know when I go to take it apart, that there shouldn't be any issues. Because they are, I mean, they're just like the working man, the working working woman's knife. They come across, they come apart very easily, easily. Yeah, they come apart easily. <laughs> they're easy to maintain. And before I forget, definitely join us at, for Bees Blades live at the Hive. All right, Friday nights, eight fifteen to eleven fifteen p.m. You don't want to miss it. We do giveaways. We talk about new knives, new releases, new stuff that's came out. And we have a blast. You know, we always end up talking about food or doing a, a pizza check. It is a fun thing to do, a fun place to be on Friday nights. 
and hang out with a bunch of like-minded people. We have a blast, and it is it is just so much fun. So one thing I'm noticing is, so we have we've had to take out three, and now we're taking four, five. We're gonna have to take six screws out, which seems like kind of a lot, but it uh, it does have the bolster thing going on. And I was curious if it was all one piece or if that bolster was going to be a separate piece. And we're about to find out right now. And, oh, hey, look at here. It all came off. I probably didn't need to take off that second one. Uh, yeah, I did. So there's this piece. And I'm going to go ahead and leave that screw. There's no reason to take it out. Very nice. So that is all one deal going on right there. Even though it looks separate, I don't know how that's, uh, if it's glued together or if that's somehow they did that with the carbon fiber. But it is solid. It's not wanting to separate or anything like that. So that's very nice. Very, very nice. Now for lube, they've used that, that salve type stuff. You get a good look there. Uh, there's your ceramic ball bearings. And I don't know. We'll see if, if the action's any better when we take it apart here and take that salve off. Here's this side. It's really clean. It just it looks goopy just because of the savvy salve. I have some uh, alcohol on on these rags, and I have links to everything you see in the videos, all the knives, the maintenance equipment, anything you see me using. It is listed down below in the in the maintenance section, and makes it easy for you to click on. You can also go to my Amazon store um, down in the description of every video. The Amazon store, the knives that are in the video, all that fun stuff. I have ten percent discount codes to. KPL Knife Pivot Lube, which I use on my knives. And, yeah, there's all kinds of good stuff down there. Oh, yeah, and you'll definitely want to get you some doodads. I can't even remember what they're called anymore. I've been calling them, calling them doodads for so long. But I'm just going to take these out and clean them real quick, and then we'll put this bad boy together and get moving and grooving so you can get about your day or go watch another uh, video. I do have several playlists you can check out. I have a knife, knife disassembly playlist. You can go and check them out. To a bunch of different knives there's well over a hundred different disassemblies and here's your pivot very nice very very nice we have the d-shape nothing but the d and wow check out that stop pin Hoo -hoo. that's a barrel that puppy's not messing around and before i get forget i'm gonna put some kpl heavy this is kpl heavy i always put this on the detent hole the detent see this right here that's the detent track oh and by the way this is bowler k110 steel from austria and put a little dude in there. Try not to overdo it. I always overdo it. Not too bad. Didn't do too bad this time. Hey, all right. So, I hope you're having a great day. I hope you're feeling great. I hope you're feeling fantastic. And if you're driving down the road right now, you can always watch this later. But, you know, I, I've, I said this. Somebody uh, commented in the last video when I said, hey, if you're driving down the road, make sure you keep your eye on the road. <laughs> and they were like, hey, that's what I do. So I know it must be something that's really common for us uh, knife knife nerds, knife connoisseurs, is to listen to some knife content about some new knives while we're driving down the road. And this is a brand new knife from, um, make sure I'm showing you on video what I'm doing here. This is a brand new knife from Petrified Fish, and I try to get him out to you as soon as I, as soon as I get the opportunity. And just put a little luby doob on, not a lot, just a little, little dabble do you. And let's see. Let's go ahead and put this dude back on. Just like that. Just like that. There's that one. Now let's put this dude on. And yeah, see, pretty pretty simple process. I'm some of them I get nervous on with some brands. I'm like, I don't know how they're gonna act. But petrified fish, it's if you get them gummed up or get it, you know, work a lot with them, get them all dirty. They're one that's that's easy to clean up, easy to take apart, reassemble, and watch. I'll say that, and then we'll go back together. <laughs> But let's see what she's gonna do. Are we going back together? Are we clicking in like we're supposed to? Well, it sure feels like it. It it didn't really snap or anything. We'll find out when I go to put these screws back in. But it uh, it's not it's not really snapping or clicking back in. But it feels like it, it is where it's supposed to be. So I'm gonna put the pivot back in. Get this thing held back together. And I'm not gonna tighten it all the way down. We we'll get these other other screw dads back in there. Now the question is, am I gonna put the screws back where they went? <laughs> I'm getting a little better at it. Now, I know a lot of you really enjoy it when I uh, drop something or it flies off the screen. And I and speaking of speaking of uh, dropping off the screen and, and all this, um, as far as disassemblies, I do try to do disassemblies when I can. Um, time is limited sometimes. Uh, you know, you got to remember, I do have a full-time job and a house and all that good stuff to take care of. So sometimes it's just a matter of restriction of time. But other than that, I really enjoy 
doing the disassemblies because I'm going to end up disassembling the knife anyway. But it's all about work and knife, work and knife balance. <laughs> I really meant to say life balance, but what's the difference? You know, you got to keep that knife balance. And speaking of knife balance, a lot of you, uh, and speak, sp I'm speaking of everything. Don't forget to comment. Tell me what, how your day's going or tell me what you think about this knife. Or do you have any petrified fish knives? Or do you like any of the knives that I used in the comparison? But, uh, you know, usually someone will mention, and I'm, I'm glad when you mention this, is like, you know, it's just not the budget right now. Well, yeah, but it doesn't mean we can't window shop, right? That's what I like to do. All right, so, oh, I'm definitely not tight. Now we got to tighten that pivot up. All right, now let's see. It's solid, left and right, up and down, nothing. Are we centered? We're centered. Let's go back, go back to the big screen. So did our action improve? It is very fast. It Oh, oh, oh. oh. Yes, it improved a lot. Check, <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, that made that made a difference without a doubt. It is dry. If you like to let them drop on your fingernail, this one will definitely do it. I prefer to let it hit my uh, my thumb right there. I don't, I don't want to tear up my thumbnails. I, I do like having a, a nail on my thumb, but yeah, this is it's a uh, not it's not drop shutty, but it's drop shutty. All you have to do is let go and then just give it a little bit of gravity. So the action is good. The ergos are fantastic. Um, I wouldn't really say it's one that you choke up on. You can put the first part, your first digit, for, what do you call that? Your first knuckle? Is that a knuckle? What is that thing? <laughs> you can't go like this for a little bit of light cutting, and I think you'd be all right. You're not necessarily going to hit the heel, but boy, that heel is right there. So if you're going to be doing that, I would say be some light swingy swing, a little bit of very light swing. But you know what? It's very comfortable. You can see how it fits in my hands. very contoured. It flows. I like the flow of it. I like the look of the blade. Yeah, that's pretty nice. And I, I forgot to tell you, these are running around 63, 64 bucks. And I will definitely put links in the description to this knife. So tell me what you think about it. Do you like it? Do you not? Are you, are, are you indifferent? Go watch this video. And you're really going to enjoy that. And in the meantime, until I see you in the live streams or the chats or see you on Friday at the high stream, remember, live life in the present. Keep a Band-Aid handy and don't cut yourself.